Hello, everybody, and welcome to Whitling's Prototype, episode number 26. We are getting up there. <clears throat> so in the last episode, I mentioned that I wanted to create some sort of generic transform easing tool. And that's what the plan is for today, because as a programmer, you want to be able to reuse code. And let's see, where was... I know in Whitling, I think we might have had two... Here's an ease here. And then I know you we were just working on our camera controller, which also had two easing functions. It's got a rotate function and it's got a translate ease. Two separate ones. So that's three times. That means it might be a good idea to extract it into its own class. I do believe I'll be using more easing in the future, so this should be fine. And actually, once we get to flipping the world over, you know, that's something I kind of want to talk about. So this is our cube, right? This big die that I have. Currently, the player is looking at a 45 degree angle down on this die. And if we rotate 90 degrees around the Y axis, the cube ends up in the exact same relative orientation to the camera. You know, it's corners going this way and corners going this way. But if I rotate it 90 degrees on any other axis, maybe like X, now the cube is completely bonked. This looks way different than the cubes the player has been looking at. I'm not sure if I really want that to happen. So what I'm considering is moving the camera in such a way that the level appears to go up, spin over, and come back down. And so that's going to let the user know, hey, I'm looking at the bottom side of this map now. And we could do it twice. Actually, the second time I want it to go down and spin up. So that is two more eases that we're going to be needing in the future. That is another translate ease and another rotate ease. <coughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that flip. Um, if my levels are not flat, things could start to get a little bit weird. But uh, I like keeping it. I like keeping the basic play field on a plane. You know, I could have levels that have like a tower but it should feel like you're going up a tower or down some tower. Maybe it would be cool to allow the player to spin it this way. Yeah, that's just, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to play with this thing some more. Having a physical representation of one of your objects is really, really great just for getting the feel of how you want something to look. And it can be a placeholder, like mine. So let's get to some typing. I'm going to create a new folder, new directory. Let's call this utility. I've written this class before, so it probably won't be too, too taxing. But I'd like to show how it's done. It's pretty straightforward. It just uses delegates, and then classes would add those delegates Maybe we'll do some inline delegates. That might be cool. So let's see. We'll call this transform easing. Nope, transform ease component. Easer. Easer is a very weird word. Like geezer. I could call this lerp, transform lerp. Eh, I like ease. Sounds nice. So we've got this transform ease component. And this is going to have a couple of, well, you know what? Um, I think we can just use, oh, and of course, Visual Studio is angry at me again. 
not me personally, I just think that Visual Studio has anger issues. <laughs> okay, let's get you back to size. And I think it's Unity Engine dot actions events. Maybe it's events. This is a Unity action, and we'll call this on begin ease. <clears throat> Unity actions are interesting. They're essentially delegates that take zero arguments and they also return nothing. So instead of defining our own delegate with those properties, I can just use unity action and everything is fine. So we have on begin ease, on update ease, and on end ease. And then we'll have some private, we should serialize these fields. Private duration. Uh, that means we're gonna need two completely private variables, a timer and a Boolean for is easing. Let's also toss a curve in here. Animation curve. I know I'm forgetting something, I always do. <clears throat> We're going to need some public functions. So we're going to have a public function to tell it to begin to ease, and then we'll call our unity action. And I should be able to say is easing equals true and timer equals zero. Pretty straightforward. And you know what? I think this is the only real public function we're going to need. The component itself can internally decide when to call on update and when to call on end. I like that plan. So if we are easing, we're going to add delta time to our timer. Oops, plus equals. That's an important keystroke. And if timer is less than, eh? remember last time, <laughs> duration, we will call on update ease. Oh, is that it? Else. Oh, ooh, on update ease, we might need to pass the ratio here. Yeah, yeah, I think we will. A unity action won't suffice for this. Um, let's get that done now. Public delegate. Returns nothing. Update delegate. And this takes in a float. It actually angry. Oh, I guess we need to name um, curve output. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, we'll call this on update ease. We'll evaluate our timer over our duration, and then we'll pass the curve output. Otherwise, timer is equal to or greater than duration. So we can on end ease, and we can set is easing equal to false. Boom. That is the whole thing. And this component, you know, 70 lines of code where most of the lines of code are comments. I uh, like that. I might have to come in here and modify it a little bit, but let's, hmm, yeah, let's start using this. And you know what? This isn't even a transform ease. Hmm, we could ease anything with this because we're just giving it a curve and a duration and three hooks for the other classes to work into or to hook into. Hmm. Well, let's go to our cube controller. No, cube rotator. We have a unity action here. I wonder how that's going to work. So what object has a cube rotator? Is it the cube itself? It is. OK, we are going to do some breaking. Transform ease. Let's swing this up next to the cube rotator. I want this curve, and we'll keep the same number here, 0.3. And let's just try removing these variables from our cube rotator. Nice, we can get rid of all of these. Wait, can we? Ooh, we do need a variable here, um, a couple of them. Easer, fine, I'll use Easer. And let's get this in start, or awake would be better. Awake is the best place to get components. My upstairs neighbor is having a very lively phone conversation, so if you can hear that, I apologize. If not, we're all good. I do believe Mr. Alapaga gave me fantastic audio settings, so thank you to him for that again. So we've got two Unity actions here. We've got our start, our end, and our easer. So, let's make a public bool get is easing. <clears throat> the one thing that I really don't like about my my coding standard for this project is making my variables begin with uppercases because that means my accessors need this get in front of it. And I'm not too happy about that. Um, I think it's much nicer to say if easer.iseasing. But what can you do? 
we're too far into it now. Maybe I'll make a note of that uh, to do in actual version. We'll say in actual game change coding standard. So variables don't begin with uppercase letters. <clears throat> Maybe, maybe, we'll see. That's one tiny complaint, so that's to consider. Okay, so what are we doing? We have this get is easing. We'll go to our cube rotator. And if it's currently easing, we will return. Um, we don't need these two. We do want to set our start and target rotation. On begin rotate. This is something I've never tried before. I'm going to be absolutely flabbergasted. Huh, you know what? In this particular instance, I actually don't need to use the on begin. Hmm, interesting. And in update, oh, ooh. Okay, yeah, so the easer is going to update itself. So we're going to need to add some private function to this delegate list. Oh, and I should have kept my... Let's cut this and control Z back to where our update add stuff. Oh, okay. Let's comment you out. Rookie mistake. User on update ease plus equals update cube rotation. And in here, in the update, all we have to say is this transform rotation is equal to, we're doing a slurp or lerp here? We're doing a lerp. Start rotation, target rotation, output curve. So when we com complete the rotation, we'll call it on rotate complete delegate, <clears throat> and then this transform rotation is equal to target rotation. Now we should also remove this from our update. Okay, there we go. So that was a lot of code. A lot of things changed. Let's see how it breaks. Okay, so we can't rotate cubes anymore. 
Let's take a look. Begin rotate. Debugging land. I really, really appreciate this debugger. It is fantastic. Okay. Our easer, this is false. Cool. Zero, zero, zero. This looks correct. You know, it rotated by some amount. On begin rotate. So we break all paths, rotate, calculate hidden, rotate back. That looks good. Hmm. Let's just close everything except for the things we care about. Where's our utility? Transform ease. Oh, we never t we never told our ease to begin ease. That'll do it. Cube rotator. That is the one we care about. Not controller. Uh, let's begin the ease last, right? And there's one more thing I want to do. I want to make sure that I'm only calling these functions if on update ease does not equal null. Because in some of these cases, especially this first one, then we've got nothing inside inside of these. How about now? What do you get? Oh, no reference exception. Hey, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> I just, I just talked about that. And I just looked at on begin ease and thought, yep, that's fine. <laughs> no, it was not fine. We do need to indeed check if the delegate is null. Oh, geez. Cube rotator. Okay, I think we are going to need to do this. Um, let's try saying easer dot on end ease plus equals on rotate complete. Oh, that is beautiful. That is so nice. Actually, let's put this up in begin. And then down in <clears throat> complete rotation, we can remove it. Remember to test everything. Everything that might connect to the thing that you're modifying. There we go. Oh! Oh. Right. I didn't update the prefab. Um.
Mmm. What happened there? Oh, oh gosh, that's bad. Um, oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna delete all of these <laughs> because I'm terrified. I do not know why it just died there. Oh my goodness! Does that mean that everything is broken? Oh my! Let's see. I am terrified. Let's save this scene and let's go visit our level test. Oh. Okay. So camera's not working in level test. That's fine. We haven't actually made the camera a prefab. Hey, what's up, Arthur? I have made a very cool, very tiny component called Transform Ease <clears throat> using some delegates here. So now every time I want to do one of these eases along a curve, all I have to do is add this component and set these delegate functions. No, that's not what I want. Hmm. I see what I did wrong there. Let's get rid of this foo print. That's been bothering me. There we go. Whoa! Start target of camera controller hasn't been assigned. Whoa now. Oh right, I did delete that cube. I've been breaking stuff all over the place today, Arthur, but that's fine. That is far for the course when making things. Camera start. Ooh, that was a little bit of a bug. So my cube rotation is back to working. Okay, <clears throat> let's use our easing function with our whittling, perhaps. So our whittling movement has one ease as well. Oh, and this has a slurp, the other one has a lerp. Oh, right, that doesn't matter. We can define that in this object itself. Very cool, very cool. So, let's modify our Whitling. And let's add a transform ease. Looks like we're still using this curve here. Duration is 0.2. So now we can edit this script and factor out Was that rotate duration? Ooh. Wait. Yes, it was rotate duration. Okay, cool, cool. You're gone, you're gone. His rotating is gone. Timer is gone. We want to keep the rest of these, I feel. So 
So we've got our easer. And in awake, let's get that easer. Oops, that is transform ease. And here's all of our code that we can ignore now. And you know what I'm actually going to do? Since the Whitling is sort of a standalone guy, um, previously I worked on the cube rotator. And that actually was dealing with some other delegates. It was sort of like a delegate chain. But the Whitling is just his own thing. So I'm going to show you a really awesome way to use lambdas to save yourself a little bit of time. So a lambda is an inline anonymous function. Let's say, so easer on begin ease equals, oh geez, how do you do lambda and C sharp? Like so, nice. So this is the argument. This is saying we're defining a function in line. And um, hold on, actually, I'm going to take this call quickly. So I'll be back in like two minutes. Please wait one moment. Okay, bye. Ooh. Forgot to tell my girlfriend that I was streaming. <laughs> okay, let's see. So where were we? Lambda functions, inline functions. So this allows us to, without creating some private function, we can define it here in a wake. So on begin ease, what do we want to do when we start transitioning? And I think it's this stuff here. Yeah, all we really care about is the start rotation and target rotation. Oh, well, I guess we will need this face up as well. And if target rotation does not equal start rotation, then we can say easer. Oh, that's going to be an infinite loop. Ooh. Um, let's see. So when we start to ease, I'm just looking at that stuff. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's give it a shot. This is going to be real bad. <laughs> I do believe that this is going to call... Yes, this is totally going to call an infinite loop. We don't want to do that. I mean, maybe we could just pull this back down. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're just going to leave on begin ease empty. Because we already had the logic here. There's no reason to break it just to do cool stuff. So here we can say, if the rotations are different, begin the ease.
on update, we're definitely going to want that output curve. Oh, and we want to plus equals here, I think. So this is really weird. This almost looks like JavaScript to me, where we're defining an anonymous function in line. It's pretty cool. Makes life a little bit easier. It makes the code a little bit harder to read. So, you know, weigh your options and decide wisely. I usually do private functions, but I just wanted to show off this capability. Because it is out there. And it's good to know what techniques you can use. So this is a lambda function applied to, oh, you know what? The interesting part about lambda functions is that since we're declaring this in line, we can like never delete it. This is an anonymous function. We don't have the name of this. So if we ever wanted to stop our update ease from running this, we'd have to make our own private function and add it and subtract the delegate in a regular way, like we did with our cube rotator, <clears throat> right? So we just have a function and we say, hey, this delegate no longer runs on rotate complete. But I do believe that our Whitling should always have this behavior. So on update ease, Yeah, I thought so. Curve output. No arguments for this one. And we're just going to set this transform rotation equal to target rotation. Boom. So our whittling, this should disappear. Good, good, good. Here's our curve. Let's apply it. And we can turn him off. Um, I feel the need to test at least a little bit of you know, multi-face. Oh! Variable start node of cube manager. Man, deleting that thing, that really goofed me up. Cube manager, Whitling prefab, start node. Oh, I need to go back here. <laughs> so we should turn, nice, okay. So now our easer is, or our whittling is using our easer, which is really nice. Making life happy again. This warning worries me a lot. We're still on the same seed. What could be going wrong? Not animator. That's fine, there are no two perpendicular paths connecting. I believe that this is working correctly. I should be able to hit space and he walks up. Oh no.
Oh my. <clears throat> well, that is a problem. The question becomes, do we fix it now? Or do we make a note? I have an idea. Let's save scene as. Broken. Let's call this, um, connect perpendicular paths broken. There we go. So now that we've saved it, we put it in a very visible place. We can go back to our camera test and pretend like nothing happened for now. But we did make a note, and so things should... We'll be able to go back and fix that. I really just want to finish. So we got Whitling Movement. Let's do our camera controller last. And this one's going to be tricky because our camera controller has two eases in it. And how are we going to differentiate between the two? Oh my. You know what I think? I think we're going to need to not make transform ease a mono behavior. That's what I think. Yeah. Because if we make transform ease a mono behavior and our camera needs two ease functions, we're not going to be able to link up which specific one is linked to which variable. However, if we remove the mono behavior, meaning that we can't attach this to a game object in a way, uh, we can't attach this to a game object as a component type, then we can just give it to a game object with a has a relationship, if that makes sense. So, we don't have any Unity messages. This is now a public update. And we want to system serializable. So the system serializable allows this stuff to show up in the inspector. We are just not going to be able to drag and drop things into the inspector. Oh boy, so cube rotator. Instead of doing get component, we're just going to serialize this field. And I like that a little bit better. So let's go back to our cube rotator. Ah, uh, yeah, nothing selected here. But now you can see we have this easer, and boom. Here's our curve, and here's our duration. Let's apply this cube as the prefab, and then we can set each of these as straight. Okay, so our cube. Hey! 
Dang it. <laughs> I just... Update faces, apply prefab. Now it's got it. Okay. So what in the heck fire just happened? If it works, it works. Game object cube four. Oh, these are not prefabs. Interesting. And these should be unset faces have no path. Boy, we did break a lot of stuff. Oh, we don't want this start node. We want it to be the begin cube as the start target. Okay. No explosions. And no rotations. <laughs> Why not? Cube rotator. Easer. Ah, we didn't call the update function of the easer. Hey, back to happy times, normal times. Oh! <laughs> When did I delete this cube here? What's going on? Okay, <clears throat> so now we gotta fix our Whitling's transform ease. So we're going to serialize this field we will not get this component and then in update easer.update Let's try this. That looks pretty poppy. Aha! Uh -huh. It's popping because we did not set the curve. And I do believe the rotate duration was something like 0 0.2 now that we've sped up our whittling. That looks better. Excellent. OK. Things are looking pretty good. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So finally, now that we've got this set up, we can work on we can work our way to our camera controller. And I'm just going to comment this stuff out for now. And we'll call this um, translate easer. Uh, we don't need these two. We don't need these two. We don't need these two either. Because now all of that is encapsulated in transform ease, and we'll call this rotate easer. Oh, geez. <laughs> we just broke a whole bunch of stuff. And once this works, I'm going to clean everything up. Uh, this was rotate easer is not get is easy. All of this can go. It can be replaced with just a simple update. All of this can go. And it can too be replaced with a translate easer update. So the important things to care about are begin, update, and end. Update and end are really easy to spot because they're in the if-else in the appropriate location. And here is a begin easing to target. Where do we call begin easing to target? We call that here. So here we'll begin the ease. Oh, no, that should be fine. Maybe. But begin easing to target takes this variable here. We do have a target. Target equals start target. So we do always have a target. I believe that we can remove this completely. Oh boy, it's a lot of changes. Uh, let's go to the awake function. Oh, <laughs> not quite what I wanted Visual Studio, but a solid try. Easter <laughs> on update ease.
And I'll just copy pasta this line of code. Oh, and we need the lambda identifier here. So here's our translate easer. What do we have to do when we begin rotating? Um, I mean, the begin is already happening. So maybe here we could just say rotate easer dot begin ease. And we'll do it up here as well. So we can leave begin ease empty for our rotator. On update ease, this is going to be a little bit beefier, so we'll put it on. Well, I'm still going to use a lambda because. I don't think this is ever going to change. If it does, well then we will move it. And we want to use curve output, but the rest is solid. What do we do on end? Oh, one single line of code. Poorly formatted. Okay, let's test it out. That was a lot of changes. Begin easing to argument. Let's make a set transform function. Camera controller. No, did I say set transform? I meant set target. That looks kind of jumpy. Same mistake. <laughs> um, I think my rotate curve was a smooth step. And then my zooming curve was a slowdown. Oh, the duration is really important. I think our rotate was a 1, and our translate was a 0.3. Okay, not quite. What about rotate? Hmm, so it seems like when I click on something, I'm not actually beginning the ease.
Oh, dang it. Um, let's do a begin at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and begin easing to target. No. No. Okay, so essentially what I did is I removed the begin. Seems like I'm removing begin a lot. I don't even know if I've used it yet. Ooh, <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> oh dear. Well, it looks like I'm out of time, but oh boy. Yeah, we got some bugs in here. However, I feel like we did make some progress today. We did some refactoring. That makes life a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I think in the next episode, what we're going to do is we'll start doing some bug fixes. And then I think perhaps we're going to get our... Uh, actually, this is going to look like this. Our world flip going. That might be episode 28. We'll see how it goes. But I hope you all have a good day, and I'll see you on tomorrow.